The year is 1896 in Paris, France. A magician walks into a tent to see a man turning the crank of a projector, which lights up the screen in front of him to show a train heading right towards him. This little film was directed by the Lumiere brothers and was called The Arrival of a Train at Le Cayetat. The magician fell in love with the new invention and asked one of the brothers if he could buy one, but he declined. So the magician went home and made his own. He tested his camera on a Parisian street, but the tape inside it's jammed. However, when the film was developed, the magician noticed something strange. The film showed a bus rolling down the street, but then it transformed into a hearse, which was in the exact same placement as the bus. It was this coincidental accident where the art of editing and visual effects on film were discovered, and that magician was none other than George Millier. Usually I don't take my YouTube videos that seriously, but I'm gonna try something new today. Because my Martin Scorsese ranking and my favorite movies of 2023 list are taking a tad longer than I expected, I thought I should probably still post something in the meantime. Anyways, at the risk of sounding like more of a film hipster than I already look like, I love the work of George Millier. What made Millier stand out from the others of this time period, like the Lumiere brothers, Edward Maybridge, and Louis Le Prince, was that he was the first filmmaker to truly realize the potential that the art of film had. While his contemporaries were dicking around with the camera shooting tracks, traffic stops, boats, dances, and naked lesbians kissing, Millier was capturing dreams. One of the things I find most fascinating about Millier's work is that they all covered a wide array of genres. Many of them were also the first time these genres ever appeared on film. He did fantasy, science fiction, horror, comedy, fairy tales, historical dramas, surrealism, and space exploration. George Millier made over 400 short films. He often worked with his wife, Jan Dalsey, who acted in most of his films. He hand-painted many of his films. Two of his most famous films, A Trip to the Moon and The Impossible Voyage, were adaptations of Jules Verne novels. However, due to the beginning of World War I, less and less people paid money to see his films, which eventually led him to bankruptcy. What's also tragic is that the majority of those 400 films remain lost. To be fair, many of the films from George Millier that are available today were once considered lost, so hopefully more copies of his films will be discovered in the near future. Okay, now I'm gonna jump into the things that made his film so revolutionary. Arguably, George Millier's biggest trademark was the edit. His most famous use of editing was through the substitution splice technique. If there's one thing that magicians are known for, it's making things disappear and reappear, and that's exactly what this editing technique did. The substitution splice was achieved by actors standing completely still as slight alterations were made in the frame. Then Millier would yell action or something like that, and the actors would start up again and react to the change that was made. Kinda similar to a jump cut cut or a match cut. One of the first and most simple uses of the substitution splice in Millier's work is with the film The Vanishing Lady, a film that presents itself literally as a magic trick where a lady disappears and reappears right in front of the audience's eyes. George Millier used this editing technique in A Trip to the Moon when the aliens die. He used it in a very surreal and dreamlike way in The Astronomer's Dream and The Haunted Castle. He used it in The Infernal Cauldron to show people being thrown into a fiery hot cauldron. Millier also implemented an editing technique called the double exposure, where two film reels played over one another to show identical people or objects interacting with one another. George Millier used the double exposure trick in films like The Four Troublesome Heads, The Man with the Rubber Head, and The One Man Band. In the work of George Millier, the makeup effects and character designs are always so expressive. Take his most famous short, for example, A Trip to the Moon. The astronomers all have frizzy white hair, the costumes are very extravagant, star people prank the astronomers while they're sleeping, and the aliens look like this. But of course, the most famous aspect of this movie is the shot of the ship landing literally on the face of the moon. And honestly, even though it's dated, I absolutely love this iconic image. And less famously, there's this shot in the impossible 
impossible voyage where the face in the sun swallows a flying train. Yeah, when I said George Melier was capturing dreams, I meant it. There's vampires and ghosts in the haunted castle. There's a lot of demons in his films, like the ones from the Infernal Cauldron, the Kingdom of Fairies, the Merry Frolics with Satan, and the Pillar of Fire, just to name a few. Like I briefly mentioned when I was talking about A Trip to the Moon, every Millier short has a ton of extravagant costumes. Even just normal people look pretty strange in a George Millier film. Now, are the characters and effects a bit cheesy and dated? Yes. But just remember, these entry-level makeup effects and characters are what eventually led to stuff like this. <laughs> George Melier didn't just use costumes and makeup for characters, he also used a variety of puppets. One of my favorites is the giant puppet moon in The Astronomer's Dream. He also used a similar giant puppet for the Devil Head in The Devil in a Covenant. He used a mix of puppeteering, miniature sets, and multiple exposures for the ship landing in the ocean in a trip to the moon and the train heading into space in The Impossible Voyage. The Haunted Castle has flying bats held up by string. The Kingdom of the Fairies has this big whale puppet. Now, I'm not going to make the argument that Melier had an influence in puppetry in film as a whole because he probably didn't. However, that doesn't make Melier's early experimentation any less fascinating. Almost every short film from George Melier has this surreal, whimsical, expressionist, and storybook production design. It's very unique, and part of it can be attributed to Melier's film studio being a giant glass house for lighting purposes. Almost every Melier film operates in this strange world where rocket ships look like bullets and where almost every part of the set is two-dimensional and painted. It makes his work reminiscent of a stage performance and all the more dreamlike. I especially love the proto-science fiction sets in A Trip to the Moon and The Impossible Voyage. The worlds and sets of these films would eventually become the prototype for German Expressionism, and who knows, I might make a video about that art movement sometime as well. And this Expressionist storybook style that Millier attributed has definitely left its impact on cinema. This heightened style of sets design can be found in the films of Wes Anderson, Tim Burton, and even Stanley Kubrick just to name a few. Now, I can talk about how important and influential these films are all I want, but do I actually like them? Does the work of George Melier still hold up to this day? Well, yeah, I think they're pretty cute and charming. There are some shorts that I don't like. A Terrible Night is just a short film about a spider crawling on this guy while he's sleeping and then he kills it. What was the point? He made a short film titled After the Ball, which is literally just a woman getting undressed. Again, what was the point? However, the films that I've mentioned consistently throughout this video, like A Trip to the Moon, The Impossible Voyage, The Astronomer's Dream, The Merry Frolics with Satan, and The Kingdom of Fairies are still worth a watch to this day. Furthermore, it's fascinating to see how many artists were inspired by Millier's work. Film director and Monty Python member Terry Gilliam described him as the first great film magician. His joyous sense of fun and ability to astound were a big influence on both my early animation animations and then my live action films. Of course, there's the film Hugo, directed by Martin Scorsese, which I have used quite a few clips of in this video. Also, remember when I said at the beginning that Melier went broke making movies? Well, he started running a shop in a train station until the 1920s when his work was rediscovered. In the 1930s, he was made a Knight of the Legion of Honor, which is a medal that indicates the highest achievement in French military or civil affairs. If happy endings only happen in the movies, then it's only fitting that a man like this got one himself. 